Hello everyone, my name is uh, Sam Royapa. I am serving here in Wisconsin Annual Conference as a Director of Connectional Ministries. One of uh, my responsibilities is uh, to go around churches and train uh, different areas of discipleship, stewardship and leadership. And one of the specific areas of training is cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments. And Wisconsin Annual Conference is blessed to have number of cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments in the last several years. We are very grateful to Bishop Isu Jung and the cabinet for making all the appointments and very specially cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments. And today we have uh, three uh, clergy who are serving here in Wisconsin within the context of cross-racial and cross-cultural appointment. And uh, Ma Kerr is serving uh, Greenfield Christ United Methodist Church. And Rafael Cubulate is serving Watoma Grace United Methodist Church. And Aihan Lee is serving Mayville United Methodist Church. So I'm going to interact with them. Uh, it's not exactly an interview, but just an interaction with these three clergy who are serving well in our conference within the context of cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments. So the first thing I invite uh, Ma, Rafael, and Aikon to talk about um, the missional value of uh, being part of the cross-racial and cross-cultural appointment. We'll begin with uh, Ma. Thank you. Um, for me, when I think about uh, mission values and mission, I, I, I think about discipleship. And I believe that, you know, as Christians, uh, before that, that comes before being a pastor, uh, our mission is to make disciples. And so as a, a pastor and being appointed to, to any church, whether, you know, a Hmong church or a white church, uh, it is about discipleship. It is about making disciples. And so um, the, the value is that, you know, Christ call us to go into the world and we are to proclaim God's good news to all people, not just people who look like us. So I think that um, going into a, a, a church, into a culture that is very different from mine, I, I feel like I am um, meeting that value, that mission of value that God has called me to be and, and do as, as a like I said, uh, as a Christian before, you know, being a pastor. So, yeah, that is what I believe, Sam. Rafael? For me, it's uh, give it the opportunity to understand them better, the culture, and uh, have a better vision, a different vision to make disciples of Jesus Christ. I heard? Well, I always love our Methodist vision, like, you know, to make disciples and for the transformation of the world. Uh, to serve cross-culture and cross-leisure appointment, especially in Maybu Church, I can see how they look like, that vision in our church. So I can see they start to serve the wounded person more than usual time through their experience. And also I see how they are heal each other, those broken relationship, but at the same time, they are reached out to the community to find a way to engage with people. So for me, I think cross-culture and cross-leisure appointment with the mission of value is just a way of loving each other as yourself and also learn how to love each other as a way of love God. That's how I experience mission of value in our church. Thank you. Uh, each one of you, uh, what do you say in terms of celebrating the cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments? And uh, from your perspective, each one of you, I would appreciate if you just lift up one or two celebration. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Rafael. For me, we celebrate the uh, spiritual growth, the spiritual growth in both sides for them and for me too. This is a great opportunity to grow together, spiritual. Uh, for me, it is about unity and at the same time, uh, diversity. And I think that uh, we, our, our culture is, um, I mean, it's uh, increasingly becoming diverse, uh, a diverse community. 
And so I think that you know, being in a different uh, culture really uh, helps us to, or remind us that we are to be united uh, and also uh, knowing that we are different. And, and that is a wonderful thing about you know, the, the goodness of Jesus Christ. Mm. Aihun? For me, with that question, if I change a little bit differently, maybe what is the like celebration moment in my ministry? So for me, as a pastor, always very happy and celebrative to see how our congregation grow through this appointment. And several weeks ago, uh, our church had church town hall meeting together, and we shared their experience in the past at the same time we shared hope. Mm. So the part we shared previous experience, what makes me very happy was one church member shared, they found they become more brave to reach out to the stranger and also see like they're not afraid to do something new. I think that's the you know, important part of cross-cultural appointment because they can be more take risk to break the prejudice and the bar bound, may, maybe like limitation from their life, but at the same time, that's helped them to grow. And also the whole part was makes more exciting to me because our church member wanted to know more about diversity of different cultures. So they want to learn more about world, but at the same time, they want to do more with social justice issue more in our church. So we planned what kind of themes we are going to work together. To see those change makes me very exciting, even more than just celebration, yeah. Thank you. Um, as we celebrate, I'm sure that all appointments have challenges. And I assume that uh, cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments may have more challenges. So if you can uh, take a moment to speak to what are the challenges you are facing and or what are the challenges the congregation is facing when they experience cross-racial and cross-cultural appointment. We'll begin with uh, Aihun. Yeah, when I heard your questions, it's remind of the word Korean term wiki, which means is crisis in English, but that, that word is combination of danger and change. Mm. The reason I said this part, cross-culture and cross-racial appointment is great opportunity to learn about differences and diversity and prepare for the future. But at the same time, there is a risk too. That part is, through that appointment, people start to be aware of the hidden like challenge of gender and race mm. and cultural ish, culture struggle to them. So it's open like some discussion together. But it is very great challenge, I think, because I can see our congregation want to learn more about how to communicate each other with those differences. And also with interracial issue, interethnic dialogue, people start to learn to each, from each other. So in that way, for me, I think the challenge part, I need to do something more to renew myself in my body and my soul <laughs> and with my relationship as well as our congregation but at the same time I should practice more to be good listener about our congregation experience. Mao, what are the challenges? I, 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 from my experience I, I believe the challenges is the, the, um, the assumptions and the, the prejudice that all of us bring into uh, these type of uh, appointment, uh, including the pastor, you know. Uh, and so the pastor goes in there and assuming uh, that they're going to be welcome in a, in, in a different way according to their understanding of their culture and the congregation. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're expecting the pastor to be a certain way according to their own prejudices. So I think that these are the challenges that uh, the, both the pastor and the congregation 
the, the, the members uh, need to uh, be willing to uh, listen to one another and, and be willing to accept each other as for who they are and, and willing to learn and embrace each other as, as they, as they uh, journey or as they live together as, 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 as a church. Rafael? In my case, Anne, I think I, the challenge for me was change from preach from 40 minutes to 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the second was uh, be better listener, better listener, and be patient because I am, uh, I am taking care for elderly people and I need to be patient with them, good listener. And for me, those are, those are the challenge in my case. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that, you know, God is very much present with us and uh, we are called to serve God's people in our own context. And uh, if you can uh, speak to us, what do you learn about God and what do you learn about people in your congregation, particularly in this uh, cross-racial and cross-cultural appointment? Maybe, Ma, uh, you want to speak to that? Sure, yeah, I can. I think what I learned from my appointment about God is that, you know, I mean, I am continuing to, you know, be amazed at how God works in, in our lives. And, and so I, I, I learned that God is a loving God who does not uh, have preferences as to, you know, who we are as our culture, uh, a, a, a next city or the color of our skin, but God loves all of us uh, for who we are. And I have to learn how to love myself first uh, because, you know, as a, a minority among women, I, I didn't think that I can ever lead a, a, a white congregation, that I didn't believe that, you know, people would listen to me, that they would take my authority seriously. And so, you know, embracing myself, my identity as God's children and said that, you know what, God loves me too. Mm -hmm. And he brought me here for a reason and said, yes, you know, I, you know, I, I have something to say and, and I should... I should embrace that. And as you embrace yourself, then people start to embrace you. And then you embrace the people because they're, they're actually listening to you. So I think that I see God working uh, in, uh, in this type of, um, of, uh, of ministry or of uh, appointment in, in a wonderful way if we, could, if we would allow God to, to work in each and every one of our lives and learning how to embrace each other as God embraces us. Raphael? Uh, San, this is very interesting because for me, I think uh, we have the opportunity to be in partnership with God and one another. Mm. In this partnership, we know the love of God better because God loves us in our ages, in our context. And this is very important for me. This is really important. Uh, the congregation, the relationship, because the Christianity is relationship. Mm -hmm. And that relationship is strong every day mm -hmm. in the love of God. I, heard? I think for me, if I can answer with one simple word, I'm going to say mutuality. The reason I'm saying is because we are like impacting on each other. And at the same time, we are receive the God's love from each other too. So it's not just on one way, but it's going back and forth among people, among ourselves, among, you know, with God too. So that's how I learned about, you know, God ministry there too but the reason I think that way is what I found with cross-cultural appointment and cross-racial appointment I see how people become inclusive to each other and they practiced how to love each other but at the same time they practice how they can extend their love to the people too so it's not just only one way love but they see how it's can be mutual love to each other too. In that way, I think I'm learning that way. I think that we have come to the last uh, piece of our segment here. Um, what, what do you see the future of the United Methodist Church? Uh, what do you see the future of uh, Wisconsin Annual Conference 
in terms of uh, cross-racial and cross-cultural appointment. Just one, one or two words, do you see uh, a better and a brighter future for our conference, for this denomination? Uh, so, uh, Brother Rafael, if you want to speak to that. I see a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. I see we are growing. I see we are learning one another. And this is great opportunity to have cross-cultural and racial appointment. Mao? Um, I mean, I, I am grateful for the opportunity to serve uh, in our cross-cultural ministry because, I mean, if I, if, if I didn't have that option, it would be really hard for me to serve as a Hmong women in my own, um, in my own context. And so I, I, I am hopeful and I, I believe that, you know, the Methodist Church and particularly in Wisconsin Annual Conference, we have a, a great opportunity to really uh, share our love with God and how we practice uh, diversity and how we embrace one another. I'm still amazed at the United Methodists and how, you know, how people can just embrace someone like me into their, into, into their own culture. So that alone, I mean, it is a, um, it is a it, for me, it is a, a great, um, future. Uh, but in, with that being say, said, I think that, you know, we need to uh, continue to, to be reminded that we are to love and embrace one another as Christ uh, embraced and loves us because there are many uh, appointments that didn't go well because I think um, uh, there are those challenges that faces us and we don't know how to deal with them. And I think that if we deal with them in a loving, loving way, in a godly way, and how God deals with us, then I think that it, it would be very fruitful and I think that God will bless us. Mm -hmm. I, don't. I think we need to be aware of the change of our nation. We are now, we are not, we are no longer like so white and black. The population of the United States has been changed a lot too. The demographics. Yeah, demographic yeah. itself. So I think this cross-culture and cross-racial appointment is so important because it's preparing for the future. And also it's very prophetic work because it's prepared, you know, the church for the next generation. But at the same time, transforming not just only the United States, but at the same time, the world. So it's very important ministry. Thank you so much for being here, uh, sharing your thoughts, insights, and uh, I hope and pray that you will continue to thrive in your appointment. Cross-racial, cross-cultural appointment happens because of the biblical mandate called the Great Commission. Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, this is what he invited the church and the Christian community to be part of. He said, go into the world, into every ethnic community, every ethnic community that God created, and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of love, mercy, and justice, and teach them and nurture them and bring them all into the kingdom of God. Jesus also said that I am with you always. So thanks be to God for cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments. And thanks be to God, our denomination, the great Methodist movement called the United Methodist Church, that is deeply committed to continue to promote and advocate and encourage the bishops and the cabinet to make cross-racial and cross-cultural appointments. God's blessings.